All right, so let's take a look at how we can do uh, this question here. Um, this is question 5b here on the um, Physics 11 Unit 1. So in the, uh, the third row of this table, what we need to look at doing is plotting what is the inverse volume. So this is volume to the minus 1. Let's make that a little bit smaller there. So we're going to be taking volume and taking essentially the reciprocal of it. So volume, if the volume is 3 cubic centimeters, um, 1 over 3 would be the, um, the volume to the minus 1 value. So we're going to have um, 0.33 for 1 for the first item, then 1 over 5, which is 0 0.2, and then 1 over 7, which is 0 0.14, then 1 over 9, 0 0.11, 1 over 12, 0 0.08, and then 1 over 15, 0.07. So I'm just going to put these all to two decimal spots just for, for ease of use, but it um, does look like if we were looking at significant figures here, um, <clears throat> we wouldn't be more than two decimal points in. Um, but it is a little bit unclear because some of the other measurements here have only one digit. But in any case, what we are looking to do here is then plot the, the graph where we're plotting um, along the x-axis is going to be reciprocal volume, so volume to the minus 1, and then our y-axis here is pressure. Okay, so when we do a question like this, um, <clears throat> some of the numbers that we're, going to, we, we're working with is we're working with pressure, which is going to be 32, and then a reciprocal volume, which is going to be 0.3. So it can be quite difficult to do this manually on a, on an, on a set of axes. So you'd have to either mark your divisions off um, fairly precisely so that you can then plot these, these intervals here. Um, because one of our smallest values here is 0 0.07. So that's almost 0.1 and then up to like 0.33, so we'll, we'll want to be something a little bigger, like maybe 0.4, and then try to fit our, um, our lines there. So in a case like this, is I'd like to use a graphing tool to demonstrate using a graphing tool. Um, that can help us draw a line of best fit and then pull out some of the values that we're looking for here. Because what we're going to be asked to find is the slope of this, e, this equation. Um, so we're assuming that we're going to be getting a straight line when we plot pressure versus reciprocal volume. And then an equation that would be um, fairly similar to um, what we would expect from a gas law. Um, because this is actually what we're going to be plotting here. So let's look at the experimental data first and let's plot this on, on, a, on a graphing tool. So I'm going to switch over to another um, tool here called Desmos Graphing. And I'll just show you how this uh, can work. So because we're working with a table of values here, um, the first thing I can do is my graph is going to, we're going to enter data in as a table. So our x-axis is going to be um, reciprocal volume and our y-axis is going to be um, pressure. So for x, our first value point is going to be 0 0.33. We'll just type that in, 0 0.33. And then for our y, the corresponding value is 32. So I'm just going to enter in a column uh, table like this, 0 0.2, 21, um, 0.14, and that's equal to 14. 0.11, that's equal to 12, so that's 0.11, and then 0 0.08, and that's equal to 8, and then 0 0.07, and that's equal to 7. So when we're plotting these points, so we want to see what kind of a graph we're going to get and what kind of line that, that we can draw from this, because remember, this is supposed to be experimental data. So once we have our data, table put in there. Um, Desmos has a, a function here called a, a linear regression function which allows us to draw the line of best fit. So the way we would enter that in is we would simply enter in the, the general form of an equation for a straight line. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to do y1 which is our variable y1 and then we're going to use a special operator here the tilde key and then we're going to put in is equal to um, mx1 Okay, which is going to be the supposed to be similar to y equals mx plus b. Okay, and then add our b term in. Okay, and then what happens when we do this is Desmos takes that data and it does a regression analysis on it. 
and it gives us some statistics here. So you can see the R squared value, which is a correlation coefficient, means that these points are essentially going to be lined up in a linear format. It's got a 0.99 um, correlation for a linear equation. And it's telling us here that our slope is 96 and our B value is not quite one, um, but it's 0.7. All right, so if we take a look at our graph here, and our graph isn't set up quite nicely, but you can see there is some points here that looks like they line up on a straight line. So I'm just gonna use my settings tool here and I'm gonna adjust my X axis to uh, show values from negative, um, let's do negative, our smallest value here is point, let's do point 0.5 and then our upper bound, bound value here will be uh, 0 0.5. Okay, and that, uh, oh, that's still, oh, sorry, our x-axis. That's still a little bit too small, so let's try 0 0.25, negative 0.25. Try that again, negative 0.25 and then um, 0.25. There we go. So that gives us a little bit of a better line here. And our y axis, is, our numbers are, are up a little bit. So you can see here that the data points from the table and how they would line up and then what the linear regression formula would give us here. So it does look like our answer here would be a slope of around 96 and a b-intercept of around 0.7. Now it's almost zero. Um, um, if you did this line manually, you would kind of see that it would be, you'd probably be tempted to just draw it right through the origin. But if we look at our exact values here, we have 96 and 0.73. So if I go back to the, um, the equation here, we can say our slope is equal to roughly 96. Okay, now when I look at the, uh, the key for this, um, anything between 95 and 100 is acceptable um, for what our slope is. And then our equation is simply going to be um, equal to pressure is equal to, um, if we're gonna use our number here, 96 um, volume minus one plus a very small offset, which is like 0.73. Um, like I say, if you did this manually, you would probably just think that's zero. So it would be an acceptable equation could be pressure is equal to 96 inverse volume. Okay, or if you did it manually, you'd probably something get something very close to 100 inverse volume. Okay, which would um, be an acceptable answer. So either one would work in this case. Um, but if you use a more precise tool, you can probably find that your, your coefficients for slope and the intercept can be um, a little bit more accurately defined from this experimental data. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's how I would look at doing this question if you were trying to uh, use a computer-based tool to help you out with the information.